So here we go. It says we're given the following vectors in unit vector notation. A vector is 4i minus 2j, B vector is negative 3i plus 5j, and C vector is equal to A vector plus B vector. So C vector is the summation or the addition of A and B vector. Part A, write C vector in component form. Part B, draw vector A, B, and C on the same coordinate system. And part C is to determine the magnitude and direction of the C vector. So uh, a lot of words here, but really it's very simple. We have two vectors, A and B, and then we want to add them together to form vector C. That's essentially what we're doing. So what we'll do is we'll start out by writing what we are given. We are told that A vector, and don't forget to put that vector arrow on top telling you and reminding you it's a vector, uh, is equal to 4 in the i direction minus 2 in the j direction, right? So this is the x component of this vector because i hat goes with the x direction. So this is the x component. This is the y component. So you have a negative y component uh, here. So you would say in the, uh, in the other notation that we were using in the past that a sub x is 4 and a sub y is negative 2. Now along with that, we're also told that vector b is given to us, and vector b is negative 3i uh, plus 5j. All right, now what we want to do is we want to form vector c because part a says, uh, part a says write vector c in component form. So we have to figure out what is vector c. Vector c, it's told in the problem statement, is equal to vector a plus vector b. So since we know what vector a and b are, we add them together. So it's better to go ahead and just write it down. We'll just say vector a uh, is going to be uh, what we have right here. It is 4i minus 2j. Now I'm going to wrap that in parentheses just to group it together. You don't really need the parentheses, but we're grouping it together just to remind yourself that that is what vector a is. And we're going to add to that whatever, whatever vector b is, but that is given right here. So negative 3 times i plus 5 times j. And of course, I'm putting the hats on the unit vectors. I forgot to put them right here. If you forget, you just go back and, and do it there. All right, now you can, of course, drop the parentheses and make it a plus, a minus, and, and whatever. But ultimately, this is going to behave just like any algebraic expression. The variables, for lack of a better word, are the i's and the j's. They're the like terms. And you add the, add the uh, coefficients. That's what you're doing. Now, it isn't really a, it, i and j are not really uh, uh, variables, of course. They're unit vectors. But still, when we add things together in math, we have to have like terms. So the, all of the uh, uh, unit vectors in the i direction are like terms. And all of the unit vectors, or all the terms in the j hat direction, are like terms. So what we have is an i hat here and an i hat here. And we have four plus this negative 3. Of course, we can drop the parentheses if we want to. It'll be a plus minus, so it's going to be 4 minus 3. So that's going to be 1i. So we'll write it as 1 in the i direction. Now in the j direction, these are like terms. You have a negative 2 and you have a positive 5 because this would be plus the plus 5. So negative 2, positive 5, you're going to have a plus 3 in the j direction. Now you certainly could circle it here. That's absolutely correct. There's absolutely nothing wrong. But just like in math, usually we don't write a coefficient of 1 in terms of a variable. Like you don't write 1x or 1y or 1s. You, know, you usually don't do that. So you, you, you know that when there's a coefficient of 1 there, you can just drop it and write this as i plus 3j. Either of these is acceptable. Uh, there's really no preference to it. Uh, but I typically like to write it like this because this is an implied 1 here. You know this is 1 in the i direction. Now it says in the problem statement, write it in component form. Now this is the vector representation in the unit vector form. And you can, of course, read the components directly off of this vector. Now this is, this is the answer. If you wanted to spell it out more, you could say that the c vector, the x component of the c vector, is whatever is in front of the i hat, which is just the number 1. The x component is 1. And you could write down that the y component is whatever is in front of the j direction which is 3. So these are the kind of the components of the vector. The, there's just numbers, scalar numbers, that are the components of the vector. This is the full-blown vector reconstructed to point in a certain direction because you have a, co a coefficient uh, pointing in the i direction, which is the x direction, coefficient in the j direction, and together when you, when you put them on the axis, we'll draw it in a second, and you draw that picture, then you have a vector pointing in a certain direction. If you just list the components, all the information is there, but the only reason the information is there here is that you know that this is in the x direction and this is in the y direction. See, in your mind, you're putting a direction on it. 
but these are just numbers. So these are really, this is not the full vector representation. They're just numbers and you're assigning X and Y directions in your mind. And so it points in a certain way. This is the actual vector representation of where this thing points. All right. Now, part B says draw vector A, B, and C on the same coordinate plane. So we're going to draw A, B, and C, and we're going to convince ourselves mentally that the vector C here as the summation of A and B makes sense. So we haven't drawn anything. Notice we just wrote, wrote down the answer. Now let's go ahead and draw sort of to verify our, but um, basically verify our math here, so to speak. All right, so we're going to draw and sketch a small little axis here. This is the x direction, y direction. Now all of these numbers, 4, 2, 3, 5, 1, 3, they're all pretty small numbers. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, let me go uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. And then negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. So negative 5, here, here's negative 5, here's 5, here's 5. Okay? Now let's go and see what we actually have. Vector A, 4 minus 2j. So the x component is the 4 is 4 units in the x direction, negative 2 units in the y direction. That's how you read this. Remember, i points in the x direction, j points in the y direction. So negative 4 for x, I'm sorry, positive 4 for x. And uh, so positive 1, 2, 3, 4 for x, and then negative 2 for j. That means that the tip of this vector points this direction right here. So what I do is I draw a straight line vector as straight as I can to this point. All right, and this guy right here is what we call vector a. And just to remind myself, I'm going to write down that it's 4 minus 2, whoops, not 4, for i minus 2j, like this, just to remind myself. All right, so that's vector a. And don't forget what vector A is representing. Just a quick little review. When you say four times I, remember what I is. I is a unit vector that points in the X direction and it's only one unit long. So this is one unit long. So it would be a vector. I'm not gonna draw it because it'll clutter up. It would go from here and it would stop right here and it points in the X direction. So when you say four times that vector which points there, then you're stretching it out four times longer so it stops here. And that would mean the x component of this thing is a vector that goes from here and stops here, which is exactly what the x component is. Negative 2j, <clears throat> remember j is a vector that starts from here and points in the positive y direction. But when you multiply by negative 2, it flips it around and stretches it down by 2. So it would go and stop here. So that's the y component, which is exactly what this looks like, the projection there. So this is literally the x component of this vector. This is the y component of this vector. When you put them together, that algebraically in, in, informs the, the vector uh, a there. All right, next, vector b, negative 3 in the i direction. So here's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and 5 in the j. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which, let me see, negative 3 means right here, and then 5 is right there. So I'm going to point this guy right there. And let me try to draw this straight. Not going to probably do a great job. Ugh, I hate when that happens. Sorry, I cannot accept that. So let's see, it's one, negative one, two, three, and then it's up here. I think it's going to be easier if I start here, actually, and go down. Something like this. Is that great? No, it's not, but you get the idea. So it's negative three in the x direction plus five in the y direction, which is exactly what we have. And this thing is called vector, vector b which just to remind yourself is negative three in the i direction uh, plus five in the j direction, which is just the x and the y directions. So those are vectors a and b. All right, so now let's go <clears throat> and draw vector c. c was one plus three j. So one i, three j. One i, positive one, two, three j, which means it stops right here. So it goes up here and basically stops right here. So vector c is uh, i plus three j. J. All right, now we've drawn them there. Now, you know, I'm, obviously we're practicing the skill of, of writing vectors down, but what, what are we doing here? We're trying to convince ourselves that the vector C that we calculated actually is the addition of vector A and B. So we go back in our mind just to prove it to ourselves. How do we add vectors? So here we have a vector A and a vector B. If we were to add these graphically, what would we do? Well, first of all, they're tail to tail. So we don't add vectors tail to tail. We want to grab one of the vectors, and it doesn't matter which one, and we slide it. We can parallel transport is what it's called. As long as it's pointing in the same direction orientation-wise, we can slide it around wherever we want. So if I could grab this guy, I'm going to use my marker to, to demonstrate. This is a red vector here. 
If we could grab it and slide it down here, then it would be head to tail. And what would it look like? If we were to do that, it would be pointed from here back up here. And then once we had that new vector in place to to find the addition, it would be about this long, right? Look at look at how long it is, it would be about this long. We would connect the tail of one vector to the head of the other one. So this C vector really would be the algebraic or the vector sum. You know, when you slide this guy down here, uh, then it would be uh, head to tail uh, addition there. So the 1i and the 3j from a graphical point of view does seem to give us what we would get if we were doing it graphically. All right, now this vector C obviously points in some direction. We have the x and y components at the tip of the vector. We now want to convert that vector to what we call polar notation of the same vector. We need to find the magnitude, the length of the arrow and the angle. So it has some length, right? And it has some angle relative to the origin right here. So what we could do is we could say there's some angle right here and it has some length as well. So how do we find these two pieces of information? Well, to find the magnitude uh, here, you could write it as magnitude of the vector C. This means you take the vector C, you take the absolute value, which means the length of the arrow, and we use the Pythagorean theorem. So what it's gonna be is the X component of this vector plus the Y component of this vector. We square each of the components and then we take the square root. Why? Because it's Pythagorean theorem, you know? Uh, B, you know the hypotenuse squared, it, because we, we can take away the radical and move it over here by squaring both sides, is each of the individual components squared because this forms a right triangle. We talked about this before. So the magnitude of this vector is equal to the x component here is 1 and the y component is 3. So 1 squared plus 3 squared. And so what you get here is the square root. This is going to give you 9 and this one more is 10, square root of 10. So you have the magnitude of this vector <clears throat> is the square root of 10. <clears throat> and when you do the square root of 10, you're going to get 3.2. Of course, I'm rounding a little bit, but you get the idea, 3.2. So that means if I go in the coordinate plane and I put a dot at this, this coordinates and I measure with a ruler the actual length and the same units I'm using for x and y, I'm going to get a length of this arrow of 3.2 units long. So if I were using centimeters here, which this is not centimeters, but if I were, then this would be 3.2 centimeters in length. Now, how do I figure out what the angle is? Same sort of thing. We always say that the tangent of whatever angle we have in terms of a vector uh, is going to be, uh, the tangent is gonna be y over x. So is gonna be cy over cx because this forms a right triangle, right? And so y over x, tangent of any angle is y over x. So that means you can say that the angle is equal to the inverse tangent of the y component divided by the x component. But we know what the x and y components are. So it's gonna be the inverse tangent of, uh, what's the y component? Well, the y component is three and the x component is one. So it's gonna be three over one, uh, which is the tangent, inverse tangent of three so when you put three in the calculator and take the inverse tangent, what you're going to get is 72 degrees. Now it's really 72, uh, I'm sorry, 71.6. Uh, you know, there's a lot of decimals after it, but I'm rounding and I'm going to call it 72 degrees. All right, so we have to ask ourselves, anytime you take an inverse tangent or an inverse sine or cosine, especially with vectors, you get an angle back, you want to check to make sure the angle you get back is correct because the calculator is only going to give you the smallest angle. So a 72 degree angle is in quadrant one. Is all of these angles coming from the calculator are measured from the positive x axis. This to me looks about like 72 degrees. This is 90. This would be 45, splitting it right in half. That's about 70 or 72 degrees. And the length of it, we've already calculated 3.2. So again, there's two different ways to represent where this vector points. The first way is to write it in component notation. You can read the components directly off and it's the x, y coordinates of the tip of the vector. That tells you the length and where it's pointed. Alternatively, you can dispense with that and say, I have a vector 3.2 units long pointed at an angle of 72 degrees. And that also allows you to uniquely show where this vector is in 3D space. So I'd like you to solve this yourself. Uh, adding by components is the way we're gonna do it for every problem going forward. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll get a little more practice. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.